Division three. So you've been at Division three school. You played. You've coached at Division two level. You've coached at D one level. Um, can you give everybody kind of your perception on what the difference is uh, between those levels? Yeah. So th this is a common educational uh, sort of spiel that I'll give to parents who are sort of navigating this for the first time, which is common. Um, the main difference to me, Division One, Two, and Three. Um, obviously there is the talent ability level and, uh, the lines get blurred in between the, the divisions. So meaning, uh, division one, we generally associate with the big time programs that we see the power fives that we see, um, at, you know, on TV all the time and going to the final four all the time. And then we sort of see some of the smaller schools in the tournament, you know, that maybe we've never heard of or seldom heard of. Um, there are 300 and I don't know, 40 or 50 division one schools. Um, division two, uh, roughly the same number of schools. Uh, now the lines get blurred from talent, you know, from division to division, meaning for instance, I'm at Sacramento state as an assistant coach. And I go from there to Western Oregon university and Western Oregon was a, when I took it over, it was about a 500 program, just, just under 500 kind of flopping around mediocre and to, to poor. And, you know, we came in there and they actually had a pretty good core of guards and we, you know, uh, replaced some, you know, frontline guys and we had a good year, you know, we were, you know, borderline, you know, we were one game short of the tournament and we were in a really competitive league. That Western Oregon team was hands down better than the Sacramento state team. I had just left. And would it have been a battle between the two? It had been, you know, close. We were better. We were better players. It was just a better team. And so that's not necessarily, you can't say that for all, um, programs, but a good division two team, a team that is knocking on the door in the top 25 in the country, they're going to be in the top half of any sort of low to mid major conference. In my opinion, you know, um, Sacramento state's in the big sky. I've had a couple of teams that would have been in the top half of the big sky, you know, in my years as a head coach at the division two level division three is the same way. There's going to be fewer of them, but a, a national contending division three team is, is a, Division one team masquerading as a division three team. And there are subtle differences, you know, the division one, usually the front lines are bigger. Um, you know, you might be given up an inch or two uh, at any given position, but skill sets, ability to shoot, IQ, toughness, things like that that go into winning um, that are instrumental in winning. You're not going to notice any differences. You're going to notice differences between really well-run programs and not so well-run programs. That's what you'll realize there. And really the big difference is, is in the bodies and, you know, the level of athleticism. Now it's a whole nother level when you go up to the power five and those guys have the pick of the litter. Um, that's, that's a, you know, they've got bodies that you just can't sometimes, um, you know, contend with or, or very seldom can, but, um, when you start getting into sort of the middle of the lower end of the pack, those lines get blurred to me, the biggest, so back to the educational piece for parents and kids that are maybe navigating, um, the levels from a scholarship standpoint, division one programs all have 13 full scholarships. They can't split them up. They have to give 13, um, and 13 fulls and that's it. Division two is kind of the great uh haves versus the have nots this is where you're going to get you know 350 schools 350 different ways of uh you know organizing their scholarships and we get a maximum of 10 equivalencies meaning 10 full ride equivalencies at division two you can't give more than 10 equivalencies many schools are well below that so you might have a school in your league i might have a school in my league that gives five and a quarter. That's how much scholarship dollars they have for their school. That's determined by the school then not. So the NCAA right. allows up to 10, but each school has to figure out budget wise. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that differs greatly. Like I'm at Regis university, it's a private school. You know, the, the full sticker price here is about $52,000. 
you know, you get academic aid and things like that. So a full ride here is over $50,000. Uh, a full ride at said, you know, state school X might be $8,000 for in-state tuition or $12,000 or 15 for out-of-state tuition or whatever the case is. So the dollar amounts can vary greatly as can the packages that the schools will give you. So division two schools can, if they want, uh, give partial scholarships rather than full. Division one can't do partial scholarships. So, you know, we can package together, say, um, you know, $10,000 of academic money with $10,000 of athletic money. And now we got you $20,000 total. Maybe you have a Pell Grant that you can use uh, to give you another $5,000 or whatever it is. Um, those are things that are commonplace in division two. Uh, now division three, it's, you can just think of it all as essentially preferred walk-ons. Nobody gets any athletic money that you're not allowed to give athletic scholarships at division three. Those are generally, you know, the division three model is supposed to be the, um, academics first, you know, they're ac more academic schools, generally speaking, and, uh, they don't want to do the athletic scholarship thing at the division three level. There's some rule differences as well, but, um, as, kids and parents navigate, I think those are the sort of the basics of kind of figuring out what's what. 